break it to you, but sex education of the past failed us. Because birds and bees, they don't fuck! Welcome to Birds and Bees Don't Fuck, a podcast where we learn exactly how bad our formative sex education, or lack thereof, really was. I'm your host, Ariel Zadok. I'm a sex educator, intimacy coordinator, and a whole lot of other things. My guest today is Eric Lusu, and he is a writer, comedian, and a guy who used to make my friend squirt. Hello, Eric! <laughs> Hello and salutations. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if I only had guests on who gave my friends exquisite orgasms? Oh my gosh. Uh, it would only be uh, three or four people deep. Mm, <laughs> at best. At best. Unfortunately. Uh, I mean, but that's I do, what we're here to fix. <laughs> well, you know what? I have queer friends, so by that oh, measure, yeah, there, there would be a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Oh my goodness, Eric. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm so happy that you're here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. I'm so happy to be on this podcast. Oh my goodness. Um, so, you know, obviously we know you know uh, how to work a vulva just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> just a smidge. Just a smidge. Mm-hmm. Just, um, I put it right in between my fingers just like this. <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad tactic right there. <laughs> Depending on the vulva. Hey! Yay. They're all <laughs> built different. <laughs> yeah in all shapes and sizes and colors and flappies and they're all beautiful and special and we love them quite literally oh eric where'd you grow up <laughs> I can... all right hard pivot love it all right <laughs> i grew up uh in a, in a nice little uh town called hyattsville in Maryland on the East Coast, right outside of Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. Oh, I didn't, yeah. I did not know that. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, I mean, you're, you know, you're close to New York. I feel like D.C. kind of gets wrapped into the New York vibe a little bit, even though like it's its own totally different thing. There's yeah. like, there's like definitely connection between those areas for sure. For sure. It's, it's, it gets lumped in the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maryland it's funny, like living out here in LA, when I say I'm from Maryland, people are automatically like, oh my God, The Wire? Baltimore? The Wire? Are you from Baltimore? Are you from oh, Baltimore? Really? Yeah, because they, they don't know yeah. very many towns in Maryland outside of like what HBO has shown them. So uh, Hyattsville is where I'm from. And yeah, and, and I lived in New York for a little bit. Mm. So so there's, you know. You there's, got your New York stripes. I got my New York stripes. I, I lived through a couple of polar vortexes. Is what oh, does it. vortex. Right? That's why I don't live in New York anymore. <laughs> you get them cuddles during those vortexes? Uh, I had to take a mega bus back down to D.C. to go see my girlfriend at the time for them cuddles. Yes. Oh, boy. Yeah, so, so that's- man the travels character. for cuddles. Uh-huh. <laughs> mega bus, Amtrak, all that. Is, uh, what a buyer of means necessary. Good man. Mm-hmm. Good man. So what kind of a school did you go to? I went to a bunch of different ones. So like, Ooh. Do you want like K through 12 or college? Like, what do you, what do you? Well, who hit you up with that sex ed first? <laughs> uh, I guess sixth grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know this, this is the crux of the, the podcast. So in sixth grade, they offered sex ed, but you had to get a permission slip signed by your parent or guardian to attend the class. Otherwise you had to like go to the gym and watch a movie. What? <laughs> that was not sexy at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to get a permission slip. It was a public school. Like it's a fucking school trip? Yeah. Sex yep. ed, what a trip. Right. What? It should have just been automatically offered. Yeah. But I had to get it, I had to get a permission slip. So I walked up to my dad, who was the more chill parent. I knew I already knew. At 11 years old, I knew. <laughs> go to dad with this, because mom will freak out. I go to dad, I'm like, hey, can you sign this permission slip? I didn't even tee it up. I didn't say, hey, what this is for. He read it. He's like, he looked at me, he's like, all right, you you want to learn about sex, huh? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right. <laughs> Signed it, handed That's it right to me. Funny. Someone else is doing it. <laughs> Good, thank you. Bye. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Do you think that your mom would have been like, nah? Hundred percent. Really? She would have been like, what do you need to know about sex for what? That's what. Yeah, yeah. Fair. Probably, yeah, because it's yeah. the immigrant parents, right? It's the immigrant, and, and I think it's just an embarrassing, awkward thing to talk about with kids in general, especially your kids. Yeah. I think there's that kind of separation that, like, I feel like parent. I'm not a parent. I hope. Uh, but I feel like parents that, you know of. <laughs> that I know, right. Uh, hopefully I don't get a teenager knocking on my door who kind of looks like me in a couple of days. Uh, that's for another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there, when kids 
are starting to learn about sex in the mind of a parent there's a loss of innocence oh yeah you're time. not a kid anymore and i feel like a lot of parents don't want to accept that that i guess uh that the kid is in that phase of life that transition yeah that transition but it, it happens yeah uh so but it's necessary mm -hmm. otherwise you know kids learn from like fucking spice channel and Pornhub and, and all these other things that aren't you know good at all yeah good at all <laughs> or like <laughs> empathetic to them specifically the, yeah. that child specifically so yeah, yeah and they're just not they're not presented in a way, first of all, that's factual at all, right. but it's also not presented in a way that a kid can understand. And when they're left to their own devices, literally, mm -hmm. it's they're going to come upon things that they are not actually ready for. And that's why age-appropriate sex education is so important. Like, There's no one out here that's saying, yeah, you should for sure be teaching a kid at age 12 how to you know, have anal. Like, no, literally <laughs> right. no one is saying that. No, that's not, you right. know, we're not talking about that. Right. But That's for the conservative viewers listening. That's yeah, not what we're trying to do. That's not what we're trying to do here. <laughs> but, you know, there, there's stuff that's going to come out of a penis and there's stuff that's going to come out of a vagina. And I don't mean vulva. I do mean vagina. Mm -hmm. And, like, to not give kids any guidance there is like, yeah. what? So even that distinction mm. between vulva and vagina... Because penis is pretty, quite literally straightforward, unless you lean to the left. Hey. Uh, <laughs> but vulva and vagina, when did you learn the difference between a vulva and a vagina? Because for me, I, I didn't know the vulva yeah. was just the all-encompassing area to like, quite embarrassingly, my 20s, maybe. Yeah, I must have been around that age probably as well. Mm. I don't think I really, I mean, I, so I've always been really interested in human sexuality. I was that kid that was like eight years old in the dark, listening really, really low to Dr. Ruth. So no yep. one could hear me and I wouldn't get caught. An and, American hero. Yeah. And I also had uh, HBO in my house. Mm. So I would watch real sex really, really low, <laughs> like almost under the covers. My TV was at like the end of the bed and I'd just be like watching, hoping no one would uh, catch me because I always just thought sexuality was completely fascinating. Mm -hmm. So I've done a lot of like listening and reading and just, you know. Independent research. Independent research. Mm -hmm. A lot of that in my 20s. <laughs> did not. You was in the field with a hard hat. <laughs> uh, yeah. That, it was not. We found out a lot of bad. Oh no. More like a lot of people are bad at sex and mm. like all of them. That's um frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> very frustrating. Yeah. Um God, I learned so much. I don't know when I actually learned that it was a vulva and not a vagina. And now that I'm like thinking about it, I truly don't know. I, I don't think it was in my thirties, think it was way before that, mm. but I was completely self taught. I mean, my parents didn't talk to me about anything. I, yeah. I'm like, I turned 16. I don't remember. I don't remember getting my period. I remember my best friend's period. I do not remember mine. Oh, was your best friend's period like an event? Did something like horrific happen? She was happen? like nine and it was oh, okay. really, really heavy. Yeah. So it was me, her and her sister, her sister's younger and her mom. So like her mom really gave me all the period stuff, you know, mm. like my mom didn't really do any of that, that I can remember. I'm sure she, like, she must have done something, right? Like she gave me pads. Like, I, I don't know. She probably told me don't use tampons because she also like didn't let me shave my legs for a long time yeah. and things like that. She was pretty conservative. So <laughs> like, you're not a harlot. <laughs> yeah. Use these pads. Yes, I am, mama. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of harlots though, she did put me on birth control when I was 16 and I was finally allowed to have a boyfriend. Your, your mom or your my mom? mom. Okay, okay. No, my mom. Uh, but we never talked about sex. Interesting. Yeah. My periods were not regular, which is normal. Like it does take a few years for your period to actually get on a regular cycle, which also without sex education, nobody knew. I right. thought I was broken. <laughs> and honestly, she probably did too. And so being 16, having my first boyfriend and not having a regular period, she was just like, this bitch is going on the pill. <laughs> so, but she didn't talk to you about it. She just gave you a, a handful of pills and was like, here, figure it out. 
So that's kind of like. No, she took me to her gynecologist, which was like a 70 year old dude who delivered me as a baby. Oh, and he gave you the. Yeah. The birth control. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. I didn't need no 70 year old man looking at my vulva. <laughs> which he for sure didn't teach me that it was a vulva. So it wasn't then. Ah, yes. Yes. That would come much later. Yes. Yeah. As would I. <laughs> <laughs> so your mom kind of like had similar to my dad handed you off to someone else to give you the talk. Yeah, I don't even think yeah, yeah. she did that, though. Now you want to play? Oh, it's Babe. It's Babe the Destroyer. She's totally going to destroy that thing. Aww. I call her Babe the Destroyer. I, I, uh, We have a little extra doggy here. She's very cute and we love her. She's you adorable. She's, she's from episode one. Yes, she's she's uh, she's nibbled a few holes in my comforter <laughs> since I stole her to this day. Babe the Destroyer mm-hmm, strikes again. Mm-hmm. She's cute, but she's dangerous. <laughs> Nothing else. She's consistent. <laughs> oh, we love her so much, my little squirrely world. Mm-hmm. That's what I call her. So if you hear some squeaking, it's just babe letting us all know that she's here. Mm-hmm. Yes, we know. Uh, you know, it wasn't so much that she handed me off to someone. I think she just didn't want me to get pregnant. Mm. And she was definitely not going to have the conversation with me. Maybe she assumed because I had a boyfriend, which they didn't let me have a boyfriend until I was 16. Not that I didn't do a whole lot of other things. Right, and right, I did right. have sex before that boyfriend too. Mm-hmm. Only once, but still. Um, you know, it, I think she just didn't want me getting knocked up. And so Mm. she was just like, throw them on the pill, solve the problem. She's also very, um, like, like many boomers, uh, pills, doctor, bring them to the doctor, give them a pill. It's solved. Okay, babe. (laughs) <laughs> we might have to take Babe, I love you, but uh, uh, stand by. <laughs> Tell us a story, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to hum the, the Jeopardy <laughs> music. Babe got a quieter toy to nibble on. Now, now we can continue, continue this. <laughs> <laughs> We did pretty good there. I was, like, yeah, I was like, looking at that camera to see if I could uh, match your lips, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's, close, oh, it's close. It's close. It's close. It's close. Uh, moms, moms, man. Yeah, parents in general. Yeah. And so, my one of my nephews. I have a, a few nephews. He turned twelve last year. Ooh. And my brother and I, because our parents famously didn't give us a sex talk. So this is my sex talk that I got from my mom. One day I'm like in high school and she comes into my room, she knocks. She comes into my room and she's like, hey. <laughs> Sorry, I, dogs. I was just gonna <laughs> Sorry, say, dogs. how did a dog not bark at that? <laughs> Creatures of habit. Yeah. <laughs> so she comes into my room she's like, hey, God is watching you. Oh, All right, no. I'll see you later. That was my sixth time. No. <laughs> I wasn't beating my dick. I wasn't, I was just chilling. I was just in my room and she's like, hey, God's watching <laughs> Oh my God, mom. That was it. So because, and my brother probably didn't even get that. He got nothing from my parents. He just said, you're a sinner. (laughs) Right. And and I also kind of failed my brother. I remember uh, there was a time where he was in high school and I was home visiting. And I went to the computer after he had used it, the family computer. Oh, oh. And he, he left the window up. Yeah, he did. It was some areolas on that window. Ah, titties. <laughs> and so, you know, I closed it to make sure Pops didn't see it, Bob didn't see it, whatever. And I went to his room. I was like, hey, man, you know, I saw what she was looking at. Uh, be careful what you click on because you can get a virus. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> like, I didn't I, I didn't give him the – I failed him. I didn't give him the talk. Oh. That would have been a good moment to be like, hey, so sex. So you were the big brother. I was the big brother. Okay, but you weren't equipped either. That's a good way to look at it. Thank you for that. I mean, but it's the truth. Yeah. Because I think we also, there's a lot of expectations on older siblings. Mm. My sister was, is older. (laughs) She's 13 and a half years older than me. And so she's like my sister mom friend. So when I had sex for the first time, I called her. When things would happen, I would call her. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't necessarily remember explicit conversations that we had or anything that she necessarily like taught me about sex, safety, pleasure, any of those things. Like obviously now as adults, we talk about it all the time, but she had a lot of responsibility as the older sibling for my brother and I, not that anybody necessarily put it on her, but it's just intrinsically there. Mm -hmm. And she's, she's a badass. She does her things, whatever. But 
and again, like she was 13 and a half years older than me. So that was a significant difference. But how, how much was the difference with you? Five years. Okay. Yeah. Five years, not that much. Yeah. And if you weren't getting properly educated and you're just kind of like flailing on your own, how could you possibly be expected to then teach your little brother mm-hmm. or even know that that, I mean, it's not your responsibility, but like, how would you even know that it was like, on, like in hindsight as an adult, you're like, oh, I failed him. But like, did you? You told him yeah. about viruses on computers. <laughs> I did. <laughs> he could have applied and that. And closing those windows. Closing the windows. He could have applied that knowledge to his anatomy and physicality. Mm. Hey, there's viruses out there. Be careful. Hey. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. Um, I think both could be true. I think, especially because I was, I, I think I was in college when that happened. So, and I was a virgin until I was 20, but I could have been like, hey man, do you have questions? Yeah. And then kind of, so- one of my nephews turned 12 last year. I was talking to my brother about those kind of our, you know, lack of education. And I was like, yo, we got to give. We got to do this. We, we got to do ha- this. We have to be the ones because no one else. Gonna, like I knew my sister wasn't going to do it. My brother-in-law, his, my nephew's dad wasn't going to do it. So we oh, this tried. Is, so this is your other brother. So this isn't even the kid's dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah, this is my sister's son. I love that. Yeah. And my sister's nine years older than me. So she was oh, yeah. similarly okay. like my second mom kind yeah. of. Yeah. Um, so I was here in LA, my brother and my nephew were in Maryland. And so I FaceTimed for this. Yes. Sex time. And so when we're doing the, the talk, I'm like, Hey, junior, you know, my brother took my nephew to his house, mm-hmm. got him some food after school one day and, oh. and, and they FaceTimed me. And I was like, Hey, junior, I was leading the talk. Hey man, we, we, we going to talk to you about sex. And he, he went <laughs> like, he made a face <laughs> and he slow, this, this little crafty motherfucker, he slowly drifted out of frame ah! from the camera. I was like, Hey. Hey, get back in the camera. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> you are not drifting out of this conversation, uh, kid. <laughs> and 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 he, we didn't get too far. And he was like, hey, thanks, but no thanks. I'm good. But I was like, at the end of it, I was like, hey, okay, cool. I'm not going to force it on you. But if you have questions, holler at us. We care about you. We love you. You're going to middle school. Like, it's a different ball game. You're getting older. We care about you. That's why we try to talk to you about this, give you a heads up. So mm. if you ever have questions, the door's open. Good. So two, three weeks later, he hit me up. Hey, Uncle Eric, I got questions. Yes. He didn't, we didn't get too much further, but okay. he knew the door was open. And that's, that's what I wanted was like to, to, to establish a, a open, you know, channel of communication yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. So he knew he could come to us. That's and now, awesome. Yeah. Now he's turning 13, like, and I'm going to Maryland soon. So, you know, you can take a walk with him and be like, hey, man. This is the ball, but this is a vagina. Like I can, I yeah, can get from, yeah, 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 yeah. And also, there's a third hole. <laughs> yeah, don't put anything <laughs> in that one. <laughs> oh man, yeah. You know, there's the importance of having an adult that you can have these trustworthy conversations with mm-hmm. cannot be stated enough. Yeah. It's just, I, I again, I'm so privileged that I did have my sister because my mom was definitely, even still, like. Mm-hmm. she does not like that I talk about sex and sexuality, <laughs> that I work with men, that I pole dance, like all of these things really come up against her and her upbringing and where she sits with all of this, which is like, fine, that's her own thing. But that's the generational shit that we're talking about because each one of us has and carries whatever it is that our parents gave us or didn't give us mm-hmm. and like all of this other stuff around us. So the gift that you are giving to your nephew of like, Hey dude, it's chill. Yeah. We're going to talk about this and it's not going to be weird. Just there's just stuff you gotta know. Yeah. Stuff is going to happen. Yeah. And you know, just because you don't want to talk about it doesn't mean it's not real. Doesn't mm. mean it's not a thing that's around the corner. doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And I think that that kind of willful hoping or willful ignorance on the part of parents, like, Oh, if I don't talk about it, if I don't bring it up, it's not, they'll be a baby forever Mm -hmm. that does kids a disservice and then we have to we're left to our own devices like you said and have to go figure shit out on our own yeah it's also an identity shift for the parent as well and Mm. i think we don't really acknowledge the identity shifts that happen as all of us age so aging out of childhood and into adolescence that's an identity shift Mm -hmm. and then into the next phase and into the next phase out of high school into college out of college into adulthood all of these are are really significant identity shifts. And of course, we're all going to think about ourselves, but then we're not really considering the identity shifts that happen with parents either. Mm -hmm. When your kid goes from being this little kid to 
oh, my kid is going to be jerking off in their bedroom and yeah. they don't know what they're doing. And I got these dirty ass socks everywhere. <laughs> and like, I'm just finding like come in weird places. Right. Crusty bed sheets, you from, know, from night emissions. I yeah. haven't washed that pillow in a year. What's going on with that? <laughs> That's a weird corner of the bedroom. By the way, these are all stories that I've heard from them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I am pulling from truth here. Mm -hmm. And that is an identity shift for the parent. And I think unless we can really acknowledge what it means for us as I'm not a parent and I don't intend to be, but unless we can acknowledge what that is for us as an individual to have a child that is now out of one phase and into another, mm -hmm. it's going to forever make those types of conversations hard because we're not looking at ourselves or we're not uh, allowing ourselves to accept a piece of ourselves that is true, whether we want to admit that it's happening or not. Mm -hmm. So there's so much involved in these sex conversations for parents, which is why it's so important to have good sex education. There it is. Reach one, teach <laughs> one. You had to keep it going. Ooh, I like that. Reach one, teach one. I didn't make it up. But <laughs> That's cute though. But you brought it to me. You gave me yeah, a little gift. There you go. So what do you remember from your sex education? Like the formal stuff? Oh, from if like, anything. yeah, from sixth grade, not a lot. I mean, they definitely taught us what a vagina was, the fallopian tubes, the ovaries, the penis, the scrotum. Uh, didn't know about the clitoris till college. Yeah. So that's something that conveniently left out of sex education. How did you learn about the clitoris? Pornography. Ooh, okay. <laughs> definitely pornography. I was like, what is, what are they rubbing? What is, what are they DJing down there? What is, what, what's, this, <laughs> what's this, what's this concentrated area <laughs> right under the bush? What's going on there? And why does it seem to be so fun? Right. <laughs> it's like the button. Huh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, sixth grade sex ed was was literally, an, they could have just called it anatomy. Mm. Incomplete anatomy. But, uh, yeah, and, and, and didn't, uh, and pregnancy and condoms and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, STIs. Back in the day, it was STDs. I'm mm -hmm. old. I'm old. People mm -hmm. old. Mm -hmm. you know, that's pretty recent I'm, that they changed it, though. Yeah. At least in this country. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like nothing about pleasure, nothing about consent, nothing about, oh. I know, I know. The important things. Yeah. Uh, nothing about, yeah, pleasure, consent. Uh, I mean, they're not there to teach you about stroke game, but like, you know, something. Like. Yeah, a little something, something. So as a, what, 12-year-old boy? Yeah, mm-hmm. Had you already discovered your penis and what it can do before sex education, or did you learn the anatomy and then you're like, oh well, there there is some fun stuff happening. Yeah, I think they were at the same time because I got like a kind of sexual sex education uh, from an older cousin. He oh. kind of like brought me into his dad's room and fired up one of his dad's VHS pornography yes i was like hey man come see something real quick <laughs> my little brother his little brother were like in the living room i was like come here real fast and then it was a it was a threesome scene it was two dudes and a lady and they were you know pleasuring this lady and it was the whole pornography and i was like what i was i looked at him i was like you watch this he's like yeah it's cool right I'm like, <laughs> uh, i don't know it feels weird and then like i immediately went home and just fucking figured out the internet <laughs> after yeah, that yeah <laughs> i bet you did <laughs> Oh man. Mm -hmm. So that was your, was that the first time that you had seen any sort of sexual contact? Uh, hardcore. Yeah. You know, TV. You know, making just, out. Yeah, making yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean like. Yeah. That was yeah first time I'd seen like anyone, anyone else's like erect member or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anything that you were thinking about? Like seeing another man's penis? Had you ever seen any other penis hard? Not hard. No. no. Yeah. Uh, it felt uncomfortable. It felt like weird, but it was like, it was like a sexy train crash. It was like, I couldn't take my eyes away from it. But it was like, a this sexy <laughs> train crash. But I knew we were doing something quote unquote wrong because yeah. of the contacts and like, he was like, Hey, shh, shh, come here. Like, yeah. He was and, like super yeah. shady about it. Yeah. His dad wasn't home. Like no adults were home. Mm. Like I, I knew there was like some taboo about it. But it was like, oh, this makes me feel things. Like, so there was that dichotomy happening, that internal yeah. like conflict. I yeah. mean, I think that dichotomy is something that a lot of people still do for their kink. Like that's mm. that is such a legitimate kink, is like 
ooh, this is a sexy train wreck. <laughs> 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 This is, uh, I like how this makes me feel, but it's naughty, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that's uh, a legitimate kink so long as everything is consenting. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Oh, boy. What were your teachers like? Like, were they more, do you remember if it was more conservative or more chill about it? Do you Mm. feel like? My sex ed teacher? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that was sixth grade. So I was in a public school at the time. My six shout out to my sixth grade teacher, Miss Masaki. Ah, gang, gang. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she, it, yeah, it was basics, birds and bees. Um, Did you get the birth video? No, no, we didn't get any birth videos. Oh, we didn't. No. I don't think we got any videos. Did when... you ever see a glorious <laughs> crowning? <laughs> no, through a very. I might have looked it up out of morbid curiosity on YouTube mm. on my own in like my 20s or 30s, but I've never been shown a birth video. Wow. Maybe I should start a running list of who has and who hasn't. <laughs> I feel like it's very regional too. Like certain yeah. schools. I saw it. I know that I did, but I don't remember. Yeah, I grew up in New York. I I mean, I think part of why I want to do this podcast is I don't remember anything. Mm. Um, but I know I saw that because you don't forget that image. Uh-huh. And so kind of to rewind, um, after I gave my nephew a very abridged sex talk, or the beginnings of a sex talk, mm-hmm. I, me and my partner had watched this thing on Netflix called The a Female Frequency? Female something. Huh. It was The Principles of Pleasure, something oh, like principles that. Principles of Pleasure. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's mm-hmm. what it was. Yeah, great <laughs> series. Uh-huh, and, and I learned stuff. She learned stuff, and I, I, I tried to get my, my little brother to, to watch it watch it on his own and yeah. then be like, yo, yo, get Junior to the house and y'all watch this together. Just leave it up on the Netflix. That yeah. kid's going to find it. Yeah. Like you don't even have to tell him. Just mm-hmm. leave it conveniently up there. Okay. Maybe yeah. pause it, leave the room. Right, right, right. Be like, hey, meet me in there. We're going to watch something later. <laughs> yeah. Let's watch Avengers or whatever. Yeah. I mean, but also like let him know like, hey, you know, yeah. Uncle, Uncle Eric said we should watch this thing. It's about the questions you have. Hopefully this answers some questions. It's very helpful. But it's maybe very... not together because that might be pushing it a little too maybe, far. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but, yeah. also, I mean, listen, at the same time, I very much support, like, let's watch these things together and For have sure. real-time conversations. Exactly. Just not everyone's in case he, Yeah, in case he has some questions. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. But the, how great is it that we have all of these resources now? We never yes. had those when we were growing mm-hmm. up. We were really left to friends, family, porn. Yep. <laughs> yeah, hustler. It. Yeah. You know, two girls, one cup. You know. Oh my gosh, what Jesus a time! <laughs> oh god, and that was like the girls gone wild days, uh-huh. and like mm-hmm. the hotlines late at night. Oof. Pick up the phone. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. all those infomercials. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah, like the way that sexuality was in the '90s and the 2000s when the internet really did come alive, and all of these things were accessible to us, was like so bad. Yeah, it was fully monetized and commercialized. Mm-hmm. It was it was you know sold as a thing as a as a taboo thing. Mm. Um, and yeah, I'm not that it's not now, but like there is more options uh, for sex to be educational yeah. and, and 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 fun and explorative and and other things, not just hot girls. Give us money. Give uh, us your credit give me your card. titties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? What do you think that big difference is? What do you think that sh- – I have my thoughts, but I'm curious what you think the shift is and why we're seeing that now. Yeah. Uh, I think accessibility to the internet. So I get, the Girls Gone Wild, Two Girls, One Cup, that all came about in the height or the beginning of the dot-com era mm-hmm. where big companies with big money, Silicon Valley, were trying to get their stake in the internet. We, they knew it was the future. They knew it was a different way to reach people and get money. Um, and so as not just Larry Flint and mm. Hugh Hefner had access to it in the mid-aughts, early aughts, and more you know, forward-thinking, inclusive people were at, you know, allowed access to the internet and were able to create, whether it be cam people and, and, and people making their own websites and stuff, different voices and different ideals and ideologies and people were able to put stuff out on the internet the way they wanted to in terms of sexuality. So people, different creators were able to create and put stuff out and be educational about it if they wanted to. And then you get a Netflix and then you get, you know, more progressive ideas and more progressive waves. Uh, Queer marriage was made federally 
legal in the early aughts. Yeah. <laughs> so that definitely led the way for people to, you know, have avenues to put out their own sexual material and, and for pride parades to take off. Like these these things, Ellen DeGeneres to be a number one yeah. daytime host and, and kind of make, I hate that this is the way I have to put it, but make homosexuality and queerness palpable. Yeah. And palatable. It's so fucked up, but yeah. To a conservative or, you know, whatever, a religious yeah. majority of America. So, you know, st- stuff like that. I think time has allowed for progress. Yeah. So more people have been able to put their sexual shit on the internet for it to flourish and proliferate. So I think that's that's a big uh, reason as to why we have access to principles of pleasure on Netflix and, and, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. And I would have to say that one of the early people – to help in that shift is Erica Lust. Mm. She, I, she, I don't know if it was the first female led porn production company, but she was kind of the birth of ethical porn. Mm. I'm sure that there's more history. I'm not yet versed enough in the history of porn and uh, in porn literacy, I mean, porn literacy to a degree, but like the history of porn and, and our founding mothers Mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. this stuff. Um, But she, really move the needle forward because she's been doing it for a very, very, very long time. Uh, I think she's based in Sweden, I want to say, something like that. Mm. Um, But she wanted to create these beautiful movies that focused on ethical uh, ethical creation, that the performers were doing what they wanted with who they wanted, how they wanted in a safe environment that Mm -hmm. was beautiful, prepping the same way that you would prep any other film, treating everything the same way you would any other film, focusing on female pleasure, focusing on the story and, you know, all of those things. And for the first time, I think, because I don't think that anyone was doing it before her. So for many people for the first time, for sure. (laughs) Um, But generally, I'll just say for the first time, we're now seeing porn in a more realistic way. Mm-hmm. And it, to your point, yeah, it was, it is these visuals before the sex education, before all of the people who are on, uh, principles of pleasure and, and all these amazing shows. And we have shows like sex education and, yeah. and we have all these great, great shows. It was people like her that were like, okay, we, this porn is bullshit. Like this is not mm-hmm. what, this is not how women fuck. It's not how they have an orgasm. Like mm-hmm. this is literally all bullshit. And I want to show what a real orgasm looks like because y'all don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it was all from and for a male perspective. Exactly. Yeah. Like just almost completely ignoring half the population and what half the population would want to see. Yeah. Yeah. More than half the population really. Mm. And it's, I mean, for all of us, sex has always been taught as hard penis, <laughs> penis goes in vagina penis comes that sex in vagina <laughs> or in a condom or outside on the chest mm-hmm. <laughs> or wherever. Uh, and that's sex. Mm. There's no, you know, for oral is not foreplay. Oral is sex. Yeah. It's called oral sex. Oral <laughs> is right sex. There. Playing with your hands. That's sex. Mm. All of it is sex. I mean, I, I, uh, define sex as much, much bigger than that because I think that all of the things that we do to play around that is the sex as well. It's all part of it. But foreplay is everything leading up to when you're in that place of erotic touch. Would you say flirting is foreplay? Absolutely it is. Mm. A thousand percent. Flirting is foreplay. Texting each other is foreplay. Checking in is foreplay. Getting ready for your date is foreplay. Going to dinner, romancing each other. All of that is the foreplay Mm. so that by the time you're actually getting to the point of touching each other's bodies, you're turned on. Everything is turned on. Spontaneous desire doesn't really exist outside of, you know, movies. I mean, it does (laughs) from time to time, but all of us really, we're all working with responsive desire. So in order for your vulva, for example, to even be ready to receive a hand, a tongue, a toy, anything like that. You got to turn the whole system on. Yeah. You got to preheat the oven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you can't go from making out with me for 30 seconds to licking my pussy. Like what? No, she ain't (laughs) ready. Like this just, it doesn't feel good. It feels like you're doing it to my like elbow or something. Like what? It's it's just a body part (laughs) hanging out until you get the blood going and you actually do everything. So that's not the floor plates, everything else. But all of us were taught 
Eating pussy is foreplay, bitch. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's dope that these definitions are able to change with time. Yeah, know? yeah. It's, you know, we learn once we allow perspectives to play a part in yeah. reality. Yeah. <laughs> and allow ourselves to learn new information. Like they say you can't teach a new dog or old dog new tricks. But I disagree with that because mm-hmm. there are plenty of old motherfuckers figuring out how to send dick pics on iPhones. Oh. And there were no dick pics. There were no <laughs> iPhones in the fucking 70s. <laughs> so nope. they learn. They learn real if they fast. they want to. That's the key. If you want to learn some shit, you will figure it out. So. Yeah. And what I always say is that dudes will YouTube and read <laughs> and research and talk about. Uh, figure out. Figure out everything you want to build a deck we're on it you you got some plumbing issues we're not calling a plumber i'm gonna learn that (laughs) shit myself you got a car you're gonna fix that car Mm -hmm. but when it comes to sex they're not youtubing Mm -hmm. they're not watching shit they're not reading books they're not showing up to workshops that are specifically for men that is such a mind-blowing phenomenon to me which i i mean it comes from a place of privilege right like when you are the privileged and and you're always told like yep that's what sex is you're fine Uh it's you're not going to be as open but if more men were treating sex people with penises if they were treating sex the way that they treat literally everything else oh this world would be a better place (laughs) it would i mean place to start shit that's why i'm here that's why i'm doing this work is you know a big part of it is to support that community yeah and because then we support everybody else. Oh, for sure. It, it, it'll all flow, you know, rising tide lifts all ships. And, you know, as a person with a penis, a PWP myself, Ooh. <laughs> there's so many reasons as to why dudes don't want to try to figure out how to please women, people with vulvas or whoever. There's a shame in asking for help. Mm. And just societally, because we're in a patriarchal society, I feel like, be, like we were saying, sex is penis gets hard, penis and vagina, penis comes, sex done. <laughs> <laughs> it's geared towards the man's pleasure. Yes. The person with the penis's pleasure. So dudes are like, I don't have to figure shit out. Yep. She's got to figure it out. I'm going to have a good time no matter what I exactly. do. And that's, I'm that's gonna the my, truth. All I need is friction. <laughs> yeah. So until we figure out how to convince the masses that sex is a mutually beneficial experience and not just exchange yeah not just you know one person you know gets theirs and then you figure shit out shit won't change yeah yeah that's how we have to have to re reframe the whole thing i totally agree i mean sex is a co-creation whether it's with i mean if you're by yourself then it's uh, creation yeah uh or, or over a zoom you, camera you know, yeah, whatever, yeah exactly yeah. Mm-hmm. um but you know once you involve other people it is a co-creation and it is a group effort and it's an erotic exchange and it's play it's called mm-hmm. play for a reason mm-hmm. and it, the the idea of i just you know i just need friction whatever there's so much that people with penises are missing out on by not focusing on the pleasure of their partner. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you, when a person with a vulva, and yes, this is a very cis heteronormative conversation for sure. um, But I think that that's kind of in the orgasm gap. That's where we see the gap. We don't see it as much in same sex relationships in uh, trans relationships, because these generally are people who are out there like looking, you know, like they're, they're open in a different way. They're outside of the norm. So we're we're trying to fix the straights. We're trying to, (laughs) yeah, we're trying to fix the straights. Like that's uh, truly like when it, when I think about myself as an educator, I'm like, I'm trying to fix the straights here because we, it's it's root cause of the problem. (laughs) It's the root cause of the problem. (laughs) We might as well still be in two separate beds in the fifties. Let's just, we got to do that. But there is so much more pleasure to be had when we can focus on our partner's pleasure because you turn on a person with a vulva, woo! Oh, they'll jump your bones like like, like rents do. Like nonstop. <laughs> like once, you know, once you turn on a person with a vulva, not everybody, we are all different, of course, but oftentimes once you can kind of like quote unquote prove what you can do with that person. (laughs) Like that person's body is then like it's switched on and then everything can become foreplay and we can constantly be playing with that eroticism because eroticism is vitality and vitality is life and it's creativity. So we're not just talking about the physical act of penis and vagina or, you know, like rubbing a clit or rubbing a dick or whatever. Mm. What does it add to your life overall? And if we can focus more on, 
the pleasure of the person with a vulva who traditionally has not felt pleasure and in fact has felt more pain than pleasure mm -hmm. when they're with a partner, that partner is going to feel more pleasure and all of us are going to be a lot happier because a lot more people are going to be having orgasms. <laughs> Happy hormones. Yeah. And, and you know, it takes a, a good amount of like reprogramming people just think about it differently. Like I, I read that there's a lot of focus on finishing as yeah. the goal of sex and mm -hmm. sex should be the play. We having a good time. So the street lights come on till I got to go to a meeting. Yeah. till you got to go to work till one of us got to go to the bathroom. Like we, we having a good time and it shouldn't be, did you come? I didn't come yet. Uh, we we got to keep going. So one of us comes pressure like it shouldn't be that oh i'm sorry <laughs> Did I, I shut you out? <laughs> speaking of come <laughs> different type different uh, kind she came right over <laughs> she did what a good sweet girl oh hi homie. baby yeah this is the squeaker this is the one that was making all the noise hi baby um uh, sorry for anyone who is listening and not watching the visual. There's a very cute dog that is uh, was just licking Eric's face. Um, not the first time. Yeah, <laughs> it's you know that goal oriented thing that that comes from a patriarchal society. Mm. It comes from white supremacy. Urgency comes from white supremacy. All of these things they're all intertwined, mm. and like we can't get to a place of pleasure if we're thinking about this end goal because then we're not engaging we're not present right. we're thinking about a goal sex there sex is not a goal mm -hmm. you can't put goals on sex it is are you having a good time yes are you having a good time yes do you want to stop yes do you want to <laughs> stop i do if you do what do you like what do you like that's, what do you not like yeah oh, that's a question that a lot of dudes just never think to ask yeah because again it's about us do what i like do what I saw in the porno. Mm -hmm. Hey, miss, <laughs> person with a vulva, what do you like to do? Yeah. Like that that would just solve so many issues if at the outset uh, people were like, hey, what do you like? <laughs> I like that too. Let's get into it. <laughs> for, for the listeners, Babe has crawled onto Eric's face and his. she very much, uh, she agrees with all of these statements here. That's what's happening. Uh, like, Susie would be so yet. proud that her daughter is saying, yes, yes, I agree. Ask, ask her what she wants. Uh -huh. But here's the thing, because I, I do sexual, sexuality work with women and a lot of women don't know what they want. First of all, they've never been asked. And if they get to the point where they are asked, they themselves don't know how to answer that question. And that is, again, because we have taught them that it that their pleasure doesn't matter, that it doesn't exist, that they don't have an opinion in the sexual experience. And thank God, thank science, thank fuck, <laughs> we're changing that. Yeah. But there's still a long way to go, and it's still really intimidating, and not everybody is as far along as different people are on our on this journey. So it's, it's such an important question and it's such a difficult question and it's such a triggering question, Yeah. but I look forward to the day where it's not. Yeah. We got to ask it and kind of, you know, figure it out. Cause if it never gets talked about, it's, it's the elephant in the room. Mm. I think so. Like, yeah. So it's one of the things put it on the list. <laughs> it's on the list. Yeah. What do you think was the turning point for you or when did you really realize, Oh, if I figure out what she likes, it's going to be more fun for me. Mm. Um, I think, again, late in the game, my, my first, uh, yeah. It, so I, 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 even in this conversation, I have to restate my whole, I was a virgin until I was 20. Yeah. That's when I first, you know, penis and vagina. But when I was like 18, I had oral sex for the first time with somebody. And it, even in that, there was shame in that kind of encounter. Like she, you know, pleasured me and I, I tried to reciprocate and she was like, no, 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 we're, I'm good. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. I, I, I would like to, you know, and let's get it, let's get it popping. And she just, you know, didn't, didn't want that. I was like, okay, cool, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, I, I think I was cognizant to ask that early on yeah uh it was a friend so you know we were homies and you know all that good stuff um but yeah that's that's as early as then is mm. when i knew you know it's not just a, the erica wusu show yeah <laughs> yeah sex with somebody you know yeah and it's interesting because there are a lot of people with vulvas of all ages mm. that don't enjoy oral mm. and some of it has nothing to do with the sensation of it some of it has to do with 
years and years and years of shame and guilt and trauma and religious stuff. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there's so many, so many reasons, but that just proves the point that it's so important to ask people, what do you like? Where can I touch you? Is this okay? Are you enjoying this? Mm -hmm. Would you like it faster? Would you like it slower? Do you want me to press harder? Do you want me to press softer? Mm -hmm. Like what, what, do you like circles? Do you like straight lines? Like there's so many questions that we can ask. Yeah. Sidewise, clockwise. Yeah, <laughs> counterclockwise, mm-hmm. like up and Sloppier, down. You want me to like, sloppy. you know, slap it, don't slap. It. I mean, there's so many ways to play with sensation, but like people are pretty born about it yeah. because we don't, we, you know, it, we have to start seeing sex as play. That's really what it is. Like it's, it's adult play. That's why they're called mm. play parties. <laughs> and boy, are they fun. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Eric, it's time for a pop quiz. Woohoo! Okay. A fun quiz. A fun <laughs> quiz. Besides consent, what is the one thing that is always required for anal sex? Hmm. I'd say lube. <gasps> lube of some sort. Oh my God, you got it right. <laughs> Yay! One for one. My GPA is sore in this semester. Oh, that's great. Uh, that's so great. You are correct. There is no natural lubricant in an asshole. That's true. So one must always lubricate an asshole. Otherwise, you will tear the skin inside your butt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. I mean, unless you do, then that's a different conversation. But yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. different sort of play. Lots of consent, lots of talking. I mean, there's always lots of talking, especially with anal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but good job on that. Well, thank you. Thank you. Maybe I have to come up with harder questions. <laughs> no, I don't, because a lot of people don't know that, truly. Uh, okay. I mean, this is how that's we educate why, the masses. Yeah, I mean, listen, a lot of people are out here trying to have anal sex without lube, just like <sighs> shoving things up a butt. You got to go slow. You got to be prepared. You got to have a lot of conversation. I know that one is in the back and one is in the front, or sometimes you might be on your back, but still, there's a lot of of talking involved Mm -hmm. when you're going to put something up a butt. Also, make sure you got a stopper. (laughs) Yes. You don't want to be fishing in a butthole for an hour. (laughs) That's still like one of the number one reasons people go to emergency rooms is because they got something stuffed Uh. up in their butt. So one of my questions (laughs) on the show is probably going to be, besides consent and lube, what What else do you need for anal play? What do you need for anal play if it's not not attached to a human? (laughs) You need a lifeline. You need a little, you need a little, you need a little, you know, cord wrapped around the end of whatever's going on. You need a donut. (laughs) You need a goddamn lawnmower cord. Yeah, (laughs) you know, that's a, that's a different toy. (laughs) Which vibrators up the butt can be great as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Make sure their lube goes slow. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy, Eric, thank you for coming on the show and talking about things like cum. Is there anything that you thought about that we have not touched upon when you were thinking about coming on here? Mm, I love how many times you used cum in the last 30 seconds. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, No, just how dope this conversation is and how important it is to be able to have it. Uh, You know, I do stand up, so there's very few things I won't talk about unabashedly. But, you know, like you said, there's a lot of shame. There's a lot of, you know, unwillingness to talk about a thing that everyone does, unless you're celibate or a monk or, you know, whatever, or a eunuch. Asexual. Asexual. Um, but yeah, like, it's, it's it should be an easier conversation to have. And I love that society is moving to a point where it's easier to talk about sex. We see it in media and, you know, advertisement and in, in the classroom. It's, we need to see more of it in Florida and more of education in Florida. Um, but yeah, just, just, I, I, I love where it's going and I love that podcasts like this exist so we can keep talking about it and exploring it and, and having these fun conversations with dope people who, you know, know what they're talking about and are trying to learn more. So yeah. 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 Love it. Where can people find you? I'm on the internet. Um, I'm on TikTok. I have a TikTok for my stand up comedy is Eric Owusu comedy. I'm on the Twitter before Elon Musk burns it down indefinitely mm. uh, at Owusu Kid. And I'm on uh, Instagram at eric.kay.owusu. Uh, you know, my pictures and cute shit and some comedy stuff is on there too. And uh, all the stories and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm is there anything the that you, this is going to air in like 
June, I think. Okay. Is there anything? Right. Gemini season. All right. Yeah, Gemini <laughs> season. Anything that you want to promote? Anything you got going on? Uh, hopefully, my half hour stand up special will be done and edited and streaming by June. Uh, be on the lookout for that. It's called Eric Owusu Live from Sunset Boulevard. I'm filming that here in LA. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll be on the East Coast in June. <laughs> um, so, you know, come check me out at the show or wherever I'm at. My mama's birthday is happening in June. Ooh! birthday yeah. yay yeah. i've been told that we have a semi unlimited capacity so i'm inviting all the homies yeah i will be there birthday. yeah sir. come through i will be come through there. yeah turn up at mama's <laughs> birthday <laughs> is it gonna be like your birthday because we turned it up on your birthday oh yeah 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 it's gonna be a bar and you know a venue you know, it's gonna be good yeah, uh, yeah. we wear love comfortable it. shoes yeah comfortable <laughs> shoes get those get those new balances out uh-huh. get the freaking dress on get the freaking heels on whatever you got <laughs> oh man thank you so much for coming on to this podcast thank you so much for having me if you enjoyed this podcast why not give me a five star review rate it like subscribe tell your friends do all those things and if you have a question that you would like me to ask a guest leave it with your five star review i will ask the question and i will give you a shout out uh that's it thank you i love you Bye-bye. bye bye